In the not too distant future of Thursday, probably, Dr. Digity and Bacchus Tech were deep sea in for three. They knew a guy by the name of Sosh, the guy whose name's in the show, of course. He asked them to help him prove his case, so they tied him to a lawn chair and they shot him into space. What? Why? We'll watch MST3K, the ones Netflix found. La, la, la. So we'll sit and analyze until struck with the profound. Seriously, why did you do this? No, so come on, it's la 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 la. Come on, you get into it. Becca's got it. Mm -hmm. I'm also not supposed to be in space. Yeah, he ruined it. Song's over. Thanks. I don't get it. How am I breathing? Just repeat to yourself that it's just a show. You should really just relax. For Mystery Science Theater 3000. He gets it! Yeah! yeah. <laughs> what, 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 what'd he get? Well, he hit the... I mean, never mind. A hit cult show from the 90s, this group of Minnesotans rocketed into mild infamy, with ramifications on how we view pop culture and skewer it. It was such a product of its time, and yet somehow remains relevant as new generations continue to discover its kitschy charm. I mean, can you name another show featuring puppetry, occasional musical acts, and material that aims to entertain both kids and adults? Wait, are we reviewing the Muppets? Uh, no, no, no. It's about this guy who's in space and he has to watch Donald Pleasant's movies. That sounds terrible. It easily could have been, that's not a lie, but the writers made sure they put a lot of effort into every creation, and this shows in the fact that they won a Peabody Award in 1993 for outstanding quality programming. That's a pedigree! Like Mr. Peabody? Cause that award goes way back! Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get it, Bacchus. Way back like the time machine of the Moose Show. Yeah, yes, yes, Bacchus. I'm laughing. So, with the reboot launching soon, I thought this would be a good time to look back at what made the show such a phenomenon. It's just hard to pick from such a wide field which ones to talk about. Oh, don't worry. We got you covered. <laughs> Let's talk about all the ones on Netflix. How many do they have? 20. That's this many! I'm also spreading my toes. That's you, Bacchus. This will be like a two or three part review then, right? No time! Let's stop! Seriously? Talking about this again? Do I look like Psycho? I mean, yeah. You could be twins, yo. I've never been more insulted. Next. He stars Little Richard. He gets kidnapped by a bunch of white people and forced to sing on a boat. That happened to me once, yo. You sing? Not a note. This kind of film was watched by the MST3K crew occasionally, as there was a huge amount of teen beach movies that came from the 60s. They were always light on plot and full of stock characters, most either painful or boring to watch. If you want to see a movie like Catalina Caper, but with better comedy, watch Friday the 13th Part 8, Jason Takes Vancouver. That dog was hilarious. Yeah, I like the guitar work. Ask me how much. You, you gonna be doing it the whole time, ain't you? I, I can't move, get my pills. It's like Encino Man. But a horror movie and it stars Jaws. They froze a shark? Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, the goofy one. Oh, I liked him in space. Oh, uh, he was great in space. Mm -hmm. Starring Titus from Final Fantasy X. Really. At least he doesn't laugh. Beyond the forced perspective T Rex and ludicrous plot, there is one fascinating fact about this film. During the feature's filming, producer Davey Eddy remarked that it would be great if their movie was riffed by Mystery Science Theater 3000. As it was made in 1995, they were well aware of it. So, like, they intentionally made the movie bad? People be talking about it, like, years later? What a stupid plan! That never worked! Back uh, uh, as we talk about it right now. Yeah, but... But, but... Whoa! Can we do that? If our demo did it, anything's possible! Look out! Hey! I still like this movie better than Looper. More dinosaurs. And a cameo by Forey Ackerman. The science fiction writer with a Bacon number at two? I don't even know that. Oh, I memorized all of Kevin Bacon's connections. How? I got bored for a couple years. Catherine McPhee. Two. Robin Zadar. Two. Elvis Presley. Two. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Two. Is everybody a two? Pretty much. All right. One of the earlier entries into the Rhino DVD collections, this one is best remembered for one of the greatest gimmicks a mad scientist ever used. Tell me, Sosh. 
Do you suffer from deep hurting? No, not yet. How about a delicious bowl of sandstorm? Oh, I'll pass, thanks. Hey, Bacchus. Yeah? You remember that time you was trapped on the island with all the scanty clad women, but then you got bit by a giant spider? It was a bear. Oh yeah, that was the plot of this movie. Smokey was not my friend. Sexploitation films of the 50s were odd beasts, as the motion picture production code started to lose its hold, but people were still timid to go all out in taking advantage of the medium. That's where you get horror movies that feature scenes like this. I'm so nude under this. Man, this is too much even for me, Mike. Can we see a couple of elderly scientists in lab coats talking nonstop instead? I wish Dad was in my house. Why you need a house? Just build a porch. Then the ladies just lay themselves all over it. That's a good point. I'm gonna go build a porch. Hey, good luck with that. This actually came out in 1960 and was a German production, but the fact that it was dubbed into English and brought to theaters shows that the American tides were turning. If it weren't for movies pushing the envelope like this, both with horror and sexual content, the movie industry might have stagnated in the era of television. It was a big fear at the time that movie houses would fall to the wayside, a relic of a bygone era before we could all watch things in our home. However, when the reins of content control were lifted, this freed movies up to get away with a lot more stuff than television could. And that kept them alive throughout the 60s, 70s, well into the 80s with the slasher films. And it coexists with live streaming in your home video today. Now that's a testament. Wow! All that from a couple of perverts wanting a bunch of ladies to lay all over their porch. I, I don't know how to use a hammer. No, it's... it's okay, Bacchus. Probably safer that way. Ooh, another one I can sink my teeth into. The girl and lover's lane of this collection. A case of nature versus nurture. A youth has absentee parents. He gets involved with bad people, has to flee when he commits a crime, and when he's brought to justice, he blames his lack of parenting for his actions. While that's certainly a reason for his behavior, blaming and punishing parents for their actions of their children will only carry the system so far. Each individual eventually becomes responsible for their own actions. It's called growing up and taking responsibility for the fact that you have agency. You have control over what you do. If there is a mitigating factor such as mental illness or, or emotional heartbreak or something, we can understand that. But ultimately, it's down to us to make the right call for ourselves. This PSA brought to you by Dr. Pepper. You too can make the world taste better if you choose this path. I am in no way sponsored by Dr. Pepper. I'm just an avid fan. Next. Oh my god, they ripped the whole movie? No, 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 back, 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 back. This is the one that don't have the Batman in it. Oh, thank god I was worried that I was gonna have to see Beetlejuice as a snowman again. I, I just didn't hop my dreams. <laughs> I don't know what's worse. That this movie's main character is nicknamed by your father Nastinka. Or that's based on a real Slavic folktale. Ivan and face the woods again. Oh, it's Bill Gates' house. It's voice controlled. Turn your back to the woods and face me. Face the woods. Turn your back to Ivan. Oh, house, God. face me with your back to the woods. Face the woods. Turn your back to Ivan. I spent most of the film lost. All I know is the Baba Yaga is ridiculous. Dude, don't be dissing the Baba Yaga. Really? What's he gonna do? Do you want to get turned into a man with a bear head? Not the bear again! Not the bear again! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, can't take no more bear actions. Sometimes the riffing is the only thing that gets you through this movie. This one? Eddie Deason's starring role as the bully. You, you can see how he was typecast from, from then on out. He's just so natural looking as... as <laughs> Hey, Kelvin, if you had a blaster that could destroy anyone, would you hold the world hostage? Why would I need the laser to do that? Oh, good point. You scare me sometimes. It also shows how great power without any responsibility or maturity leads to terrible things. So do yourself a favor. Don't give high-powered space weapons to teenagers. It doesn't end well. It's a scary version of Stephen King's Cat's Eye, but intended for kids. Seriously, don't do it. I haven't slept yet. Don't watch 
around children, please. It's bad. They'll be fine eventually. Hey kids, do you want to see the story about the greedy man who uses magic for his selfish advantage only to grow rapidly old before your very eyes? Make it stop! Ain't you done enough to this poor boy? <laughs> First to bear, now to Merlin shop of horrors. You <laughs> shot me into space. No it. guilt here. It's all right. E.T. porno without the porn or the likable characters. Oh, look that one up if you want to have some fun with the cinema snob. We created a monster! Next! Let's talk about a real modern cash cow of a genre. The superhero movie. Once upon a time, these comic franchise vehicles were an absolute joke. No one could do them justice. Then, in 1978, Superman showed the world that it could be done well and make money. From that super successful film followed this cheap knockoff called The Puma Man. Instead of securing the rights to say a real comic hero, the producers decided to just cast a pretty boy, give him some vague set of powers, and make him fake fly in front of a blue screen. Well, Puma, honey, if you keep your legs up, you'll go faster. Unfortunately, he forgot to work on his posture. Now he's just riffing. We just like, get in there and, and it helps make good points. But he's talking about Puma Man. I think there are good points to make. Hmm, that's true. Gonna be a bit of a stretch on this one. The complete and total failure of this film could be viewed as an absolute catastrophe if it didn't give us one of the best unsung sidekicks ever committed to film. Is he talking about semi-competent Aztec Man now? He's my favorite. Mine too. He's the sage, the mentor, who guides the hero towards his power. Yet despite this, he is the glue that holds not only the plot, but the heroics of this film together. It's almost impossible to think of Puma Man and not imagine this square-jawed force stepping in to save the day. Hell, if they did a sequel just following Aztec Man around and showing his solo adventures, I'd be down. He's like the Jack Sparrow of this movie. Except with less eyeliner and better hair. <laughs> That's true. Dropper was my icon when I was a kid, man. He's hilarious. There he is, son. There he is. Dropper, wake up. Wake up. <laughs> Get the spiders off, off, off me. Before I can't fake laugh anymore. <laughs> yeah, truly unreplaceable. Here's where I dispute the selection Netflix made. Why not Santa Claus? While I understand the nostalgia people have for the original Christmas episode that MST3K did, Santa Claus Conquers the Martians comes across as more of a product of its time, with space fascination, cute kids, and a Santa straight out of the Saturday Evening Post making the viewers all warm and fuzzy. There are bizarre elements, but on the whole this movie is quite charming. No one would bat an eye if it were double featured with the incredible Mr. Limpet. Now, the Mexican children's film called Santa Claus? Huh? Huh? Oh. I need to go to church. Pray all you want, son. You won't unsee those lips. <laughs> if you can find it, watch it. It will change your life. Probably not for the better. Fun fact, this movie marks the last time the Mystery Science Theater team ever selected a movie to riff without seeing the entire thing. And when they got into the writer's room in this one, that was 60s, like, motorcycle culture, and it was kind of cheesy. It seemed like pretty good material. And then halfway through, there's a very graphic and very violent rape scene. They couldn't show that on air. And that's why, if you watch the MST3K version, there's a gigantic plot hole in the middle that they explain away. You know lots of obscure things, don't you? Hey, I'm an internet reviewer. This is our job. When people think of this movie, this clip may come to mind. Well, anyway, got that out of my system. <laughs> oh, you're so much more than that. Like all that stock footage of Battlestar Galactica? <laughs> or the totally clueless captain that's lucky an action hero boarded his ship. Well, Calgon and his crippled friend. I tell you, this is like the best mess ever. <laughs> Science fiction films are a lot of the fodder covered by Mystery Science Theater 3000, but this one has the unusual ability to baffle people even upon multiple viewings. After watching it for years, I still don't know what the full plot is about. Is it a brilliant or stupidity? Maybe this movie's a savant. It, it could be, it could be. I'm gonna help you around, man. 
teenagers come down to Earth and decide that they need to grow their lobsters there, and so one of them falls in love with a human woman, and another one becomes the kid from Laser Blast. There have to be better ways this story was told. The Grease's episode of the Twilight Zone jumps to mind. So would you say that the Grease's jumped you? We need to get you some help. You're getting worse. I can't lower my arms. Isn't that the one where they fight Godzilla and Jet Jaguar? No, this is the one where the small lizard destroys the obvious models. I I is he gonna be okay? Eh, it's been worse. I can't shut my ass! Guy invents time travel, shows it off to his friends, signs it off to a corporation, the future's ruined. It's like Primer for Toddlers, or Back to the Future without its charm. It does have a good Pearl sketch though, and that's always noteworthy. Guys be all digging in the desert to find a werewolf, and then some guy finds on it and he turns into a werewolf. Then a security guy turns into a werewolf cause like werewolf teeth was in like his like champagne or something. He's like Wishmaster 2, but like sucks. I can't see color no more. When someone could call out your movie as being like Toxic Avenger, but bad and unfunny, you've got problems. What this film does right is it is a shrine to 80s rock, and it opens up with Ace of Spades just to prove that. That song always reminds me of the young ones for some reason. Specifically when they're running towards the train station. Bacchus, wasn't you frozen? I was frozen today! Damn it. Bacchus, you just really need to let it go. It stars Wayne's girlfriend and Adam Wee, who is thoroughly messed with by voodoo powers. Aside from those, it's a creepy horror movie that delivers a lot more on the creep than the horror. It's pretty standard fare for the kinds of terror seen on this series. From low concept to low execution, both are easy to make fun of and quite hilarious that they were trying to pull that off in hindsight. Next! Uh, well that's it, yo. Really? No, no incredibly strange creatures who stopped living and became mixed up zombies? Nope. No Angels Revenge, Cave Dwellers, Girl in Gold Boots, Overdrawn at the Memory Bank, Hamlet, Attack of the Giant Leeches, Gunslinger, Hercules really Unchained, Prince of Space, Killer Can Shrews, you take you to a hospital? Alright, back as I take you to the hospital. Dang, Gregus, what's you been eating? Today's Lars. Is that all? Isn't that enough? No, it's really not. I can't get enough of tweezers. Don't worry, Bacchus. I got the key. I trust you. Or parts the clone us for? <sighs> Doesn't matter, I suppose. What does is that everyone who's seen this has been affected by it in some way. From the ridiculous sketches to impossibly funny and insightful comments, Mystery Science Theater 3000 provided a formula used and sometimes abused to this day. The original head writer still mans his own project called Rift Tracks with former Crow and Servo, and if the reboot is half of what the fans are hoping for, it too will introduce another generation to what wonders can be found in schlock entertainment. It's about making good out of something bad, turning what could have been a depressing film or even something that just leaves no impact into something you and your friends can enjoy and even re-watch. Making the best out of a bad situation, that's what Mystery Science Theater really teaches us. And that's a lesson that can carry through a lot in life. I'd recommend watching any episode you can find. I'm Socio, and my baking number is two. I wish. Hey guys, and let me out now. Find a way to get me down. Kelvin? Bacchus? I'm glad this is the April Fool's episode, or else I'd be screwed. Don't even have a deck of cards.